Hello, everybody. Welcome to another fabulous Facebook Live. So I've got David sitting next to me. I've also got a couple of other people in the room who are going to be painting along. And of course, we're going to be painting together. Now, first of all, just want to check you can all hear us. Thumbs up. Yep, there we go. That's good. Thank you for that, um, Adriana. That's um, that's a big help. Everybody else has got themselves on without pictures at the moment. They're hiding. But um, what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through our fuzzy friends. But I want to focus in this class on our actual stroke work that creates these designs. So now a lot of you have been to more than one class. You're starting to practice. I'm seeing some fabulous work online. And it's about us now getting into that whole technique. So we're going to start right at the very beginning. We're going to do some brush loading because I want to get make sure that we're back into brush loading really efficiently and also making sure that we haven't picked up any bad habits. So the first thing that I would be doing is taking a piece of board. Um, I am using a piece of mount board. We do actually sell this hard board. I like it because it's nice and firm and I can pick it up and it's going into an old cello bag. And this is gonna become our painting palette. And the reason that we do this, and for those of you that are already aware of this and it's just you know, all day, everyday stuff to you, um, apologies, but for anybody who doesn't, what it means is, first of all, I can pick the palette up and it's nice and firm. Could just put a piece of paper in there if you want to. I definitely work with a piece of plain paper because that doesn't distort where your colors are and the pattern won't distract you. But then when we finish, we undo the bag and all of that can go into our black bin. Now, if you're working on, let's say a china plate, an old tile, because that's another thing that we use, or even a painter's palette, then this paint, our Cadence Hybrid Acrylic, can be washed down the drain because we all know that it is drain safe, okay? Let's also talk about the surfaces that we can paint on. Now, I had the most fabulous time at the weekend. Went to an antique oh. warehouse, showed David the painting, uh, the pictures of it, photos, properly teased him. <laughs> I mean, talk about furniture that you could paint and thinking about all the different places that you could paint this style of design there was so much in there. So absolutely, we can paint onto um, terracotta, onto wood, obviously onto paper, card. I'm doing some painting on fabric at the moment. So loads of different surfaces. So today, we're going to be painting on a piece of black card. And I'm using the black because A, if I make a mistake, it's going to show up and I'll be able to point it out to you guys at home. But also, what it does, it also allows me to, um, to show you the quality of the paint. So how that, that, cabri, that hybrid acrylic has got really strong pigment in it. Now, you'll notice I've done the talking before I put the paint out because in here with the lighting on, we don't want to start to get a skin over the paint. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put that puddle of white out. And I get told regularly that you put out quite a lot of paint and I want you to see how deep that puddle is. And one of the things that's important with this, and let's just go over this once more. When we take our brush and we dip it into that paint, I don't want to be distorting the bristles because the paint's too thin to get, that, to get it on that corner. I want to be able to dip it without actually changing the shape of those bristles. So that's one thing that we need to do. Um, and also, if it's a deeper puddle, and this is important with all of your decorative painting, the paint that's underneath helps keep the top moist. If it's really thin on top, it's a bit like um, if you've got, if you wipe a surface, it's gonna dry quicker than a puddle's gonna evaporate. And that's what we've got here with the effect. I think that's a good way of explaining oh, it to yeah. you. So then we're going to need some black. So let's put some black out. Mm -hmm. So there we go. 
And then the other pick set of paints I'm working with are these ones. So this set that we've got here, we've got some lovely browns in here. I've got a dark brown, a cashmere, Soho, champagne, and also horizon gray. Now I've got some of those actually out, um, already out the packaging, and I'm just gonna put those out. So dark brown's gonna be our first. Then we're going to go with a little bit of our Soho and finally Cashmere. So these are the colours that we're going to start with. Now, when I did the TV show, I promised you I'd show you a hedgehog. So I'm going to do the hedgehog first. So we'll do that little hedgehog and, um, and then we'll get into some of the other animals as well. So... For this, you will paint better if you've got a selection of different size brushes. So today I'm working with either a 10 or a 12 or a 14, and then you want an 18 or a 20, so you want two different sizes. And we want around something like a 14 or a 16. But the other thing that determines the size of the brush is the amount of pressure that you put on. So if you're quite gentle, then go for a brush that's slightly larger. If you're um, a little bit firmer, then go for a brush that's slightly smaller. Um, and Andrew's saying to me, of course, I've got Andrew in my ear. He's using the term heavy handed, which is why David's <laughs> smirking. We're not heavy handed. We're no. all very gentle. Of course. Okay, so our little hedgehog. So just because we're going to be covering him in prickles, doesn't mean to say that we don't still have to put the main part of the body down. So first of all, we're going to start off and I'm going to use the two um, cleaner shades of brown. So I'm going to go into one and into the other. And I've got those two triangles of colour on both sides of the brush. Now, when, when I come to load this backwards and forwards, I'm coming backwards and forwards, I want you to take account of the angle of the brush. So I'm really laying that down. I'm not up here loading. And when I see some of the work that I'm looking at online, I can tell that you've got, we've got some people loading like this and it's a very natural action. Can I get you to just bring that brush down a little bit? And when you look at this, you can see that it's lovely and smooth all the way up there. And I'm just going to show you what happens. And this is the test, because if you're doing this, first of all, it's much easier for that little place that you're loading to get wider and wider. Secondly, you end up with a second line. You can see that second ridge that you've got there. If that's happening on your brush loading, please go back and look at it again because we want you to pull that colour through the brush so that you're seeing. Let me just go there so you can see. So I'm pulling the brush. So you want it at an angle of about 45 degrees. And then you've got that lovely rainbowed colour across the edge. Now, this doesn't feel creamy, so I know I need more paint. But I'm making those, sh those strokes really a little bit shorter because I don't want them to, I don't want to take the paint off. So the first stroke that we do for our hedgehog is his nose. And I've got the brown at the top and I'm just going to press down and slide and bring my brush up like that. And I'm going to, I'm going to paint on um, white as well because I want you to be able to make sure that you can definitely see this so let me paint on brown and on white so his nose I'm mean, putting prickles and stuff on him so you get away with quite a lot so brown at the top press down as I as I'm bringing the bristles up onto the chisel edge I'm just lifting it slightly like that okay so there's his nose. His tummy comes from here. So I'm starting 
there, okay? And I'm gonna come up here, I've got the dark on the outside, and I'm just gonna go round in an oval and bring it back, and it's almost like a broad bean. There's his tummy. Okay. Then the next part of him, he needs some paws. So I'm going to put a little paw there and I just touch and a paw there. And then I'm going to do a little one there and another one there. They're just his paws. They're going to get hidden with, with all of his spikes. Okay. Now the fun bit. So we're going to start putting on all of his spikes. So I've picked up the white and I've picked up the dark brown and I am just using those two colours. So I'm going to start off and we're going to start off at his tail and I'm just going to be flicking like this. So let me show you that stroke. I'm on the edge and I'm flicking. Edge, flick, touch, flick. And they're straight lines, touch and flick. I'm then going to turn my brush and I'm going to flick. So here, I'm le I've got the dark down first and the dark goes and covers over the lighter shade. On this one, the light's first and it covers over the darker shade. So you can see at the beginning how we can get different shades. And so I'm going to go again like that. Now, the important thing when you're doing a hedgehog he needs to have really straight spines and they need to not be fluffy. See that fluffy one? I've given him fur now instead of a prickle. He needs, he needs to have prickles, not fur. And I'm varying as I'm working, I'm bring this over here so you can see, whether I use my brown and white or my different shades of brown. But I'm then literally starting to give him his coat and you can make him quite um he can be quite full and quite actually you know quite prickly and quite fat and i'm just going to show you david's because on the black that's starting to really come together doesn't that look great the white there so that's starting with the um dark and the white but David's leaning his brush very slightly to keep that white tip I've just noticed as well I've actually done mine face in the opposite direction as you doesn't matter <laughs> yeah, they I can don't know be... whether I did that with being left-handed but does it make a great deal of difference no that's a really good question so um left-handed all that you need to do is start off by painting in the opposite direction build your confidence paint in the opposite direction so let's get the prickles and remember with these sessions you don't have to just be painting along. You can, if you choose to, watch them, go back and then um, come back and do the session. So what I'm doing now is I'm starting to put his prickles in. If you are unsure what hedgehogs look like, then we've always got good old Google to help us out. But I'm starting to fill his body up here. And you start from his bottom and you work forward and you keep going like this and his little feet. So you can see where that joined into the body. That's now gone. So we don't see that. Make sure that you've got him really nice, sharp chisel edges because you're going to go back and you're going to keep on filling in. When you come to his face, I'm just going to finish off his little body because he's very prickly, pick up a little bit of a different color. So got some extra little bits of color in here. So then I'm gonna add in a little bit more shading. Under his bottom, I've taken the tiniest little bit of black and I'm now gonna use this just round here and under his tummy because I'm getting a little bit of darker shading. So you can see how that's now just adding in, making sure I'm always going in the same direction. That's really, really important. And then when we come to his face, 
we ignore the fact that we've got his, his um, tummy there or his body and you start going from his face like this and treat it like a separate, um, a separate shape. So I'm going back again. And if you feel that you're finding it hard to get small strokes, this is where you change down your brush size. He's got a little bit of a fringe. So I put him a little bit of a fringe in. Keep those strokes coming because he only has a little bit of a fluffy face. Keep that coming in there. And when you get close to the front, we're getting ready to put his eye in and his little nose. So his little nose, we take the end of the brush, dip it into the black, and I'm just going to touch that there. And his eye is a touch just there. And then we go in with um, one of our smaller brushes, get a, a round brush. And we're going to just literally take this into the white. You're going to get the smallest amount because we're then going to roll it off on the edge. Just enough that we can just put in a little white eye and maybe even a little shine on his nose. And then you can just go back, see if he needs any more fluffing out whether you want to make him any fatter. I'm just putting, making him fatter because mine's been super, super hungry. He's eaten lots of stuff and I want him a bit chubbier. And now I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to layer in those last little elements and get him so that I've got some nicely defined bits here. She's a little schnuffler. <laughs> David's is right, Chubby. <laughs> Mine's had a good meal this one. <laughs> he's, uh, he's found a good feeding spot this one. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. There we go. Mine looks like a Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he's so super cute. How cute is that? Now, um, so I just want to show you how we could take that so quickly and just make that into a project. Sorry, I'm closer falling apart. I'm falling apart here. Um, so I'm just going to take a little bit of the green. David, take that green. Um, let's pass it around our class. I've got the white and the green. So I haven't taken the black off or the brown that's on my brush. It's staying on there. It's going to take a little bit of that color and I'm gonna put some greenery in. So we're still doing our flicky strokes. Let's do that and put a little bit of greenery in. There we go. And we'll just, I'm just gonna go up here. We'll put um, a little, let's have a little bit of a bit of greenery just there. And then we need some yellow. And oh my goodness, at the weekend, we had white flies in our little link and they, they love yellow. And I walked in with something yellow and they literally came flying. Have you ever seen that no, happen? No. Oh, it's a thing. It's a proper what thing. White flies. white flies. Look it up, everybody. While you're Googling hedgehogs, look up little white flies. They're right pesky little things. I could just imagine this big swarm coming towards you. Yeah, I don't like them at all. I got properly upset. Right, so we've got yellow and white on our brush, and I'm now going to dip. And actually, I need to do this a bit more because I'm on white paper, aren't I? So I'm just going to take a little bit of that yellow, a bit more yellow, so I can do it. So I'm going to dip and pull, dip and pull, dip and pull. It's very light. So for you guys to see. Um, come on, get this red paint out. Here we go, let's have a go at this. So 
So I'm just going to go back over this again. So I'm just going to dip and pull, dip and pull, dip and pull, dip and pull. And then here, dip and pull, dip and pull, dip and pull, and dip and pull. And then and one more with the yellow and the red. And we'll go here and we'll go dip and pull, dip and pull, dip and pull, dip and pull. And to finish off, a little bit of black, put a little black dot in the top of our daisies. And that's taken us probably about 20 minutes to do our cute little hedgehog. But how lovely that looks. And it's a really, really quick and easy to do. And it's a great one for practicing these grass strokes, the straight line strokes, which then lead us on to, and just for everybody at home, the next stroke that we would follow on from that one, and I'm going to do this just on the side of my page. I picked up a tiny bit of yellow there. So on this one, we're doing straight strokes like this. On this next one, in, so we start with our brush at that angle. So let me move in a bit so we've got it there. So I start with my brush at that angle. I'm now going to move my brush to there. So I've gone from there to there. So let me do that again. So I'm here. I'm now going to slide my brush down and slide it back up and slide it down and slide it back up and slide it down and slide it back up. That's a great exercise for you to learn when you've been working on your grass strokes. Let's just get that one. So working on those because this one naturally lends itself onto that, into that. And then the next part of this, so remember, we've gone from there to there. So we're going to slide and go down and slide and go down. And we come up and then we're just going to press and come down like that so that we can make ourselves a little leaf. And then that daisy can have a lovely wide stroke. And we go press and down, press and down, press and down, once more, press and down. And we've created, let's just put a couple of little dots in there. We've created the stem to the side of our daisy. And to finish that one off, we would come up here and go down and just finish. So we've learned our straight strokes. We've learnt to get shade on here so that you've definitely got definition amongst all the little spikes. You've then been able to use it as the grasses. We've then used our dip and, and tip uh, for our flowers and the little dots for his nose and his eyes. Super cute and super, super easy. So let's go on now. And I want us to just quickly do bunnies because they're very, very simple to do. So our bunnies... I'm just going to bring on here the um, page. So when we did our hedgehog, we basically, what we were doing was this part of the mouse. So that was the body of the hedgehog, like a broad bean. We talked about that, didn't we? And then this part of the mouse was the bit that would became his head. So with a bunny, we're going to extend that broad bean and we're going to make it into a, into a more of a cylinder shape. So I'm going to use some white card, but I'm going to pass this down and see whether anybody else wants um, to use the light card. Now, the reason I want to teach you these circles is, first of all, you use them quite a lot when we do things like teddies and furry animals. But also, it makes you lift your hand off the table. So it's impossible to do a circle with your hand on the table. Because if I've got my hand on my arm resting, when I then start to do this turn, I get to here 
and I've got nowhere to go because my hand's now stuck. So I have to lift my arm to be able to start there, go round and be able to finish all the way round there. So then can come back and just go back round it again. So let me show you that once more. So I've got both colors on my brush and I've got my arm up. So I'm not turning the brush in my fingers, I'm, but I am starting round here. And it's a little bit, Andrew, can we get a wide on this please? It's um, a little bit of a, um, an uncomfortable angle to start with because you're, you're actually, your arm naturally is here, but I've lifted mine so that my hand, I can get my brush to move around my hand. So I'm then, I'm here and I'm then going to turn my arm round like that, okay? And as I'm looking at this, when I get to this point here, so when I'm at that point, let me just draw, draw a line out for you, see where, and I'm going to finish there. I am looking at where my the edge of my brush is. So I'm looking at that part of my brush and planning where it's going to stop. And the next part of this decorative painting is as learning where we're going to stop and start. So we're thinking about that process. So I've got two bunnies here, but first of all, if I'm going to join them up and I'm going to actually make them into a rabbit, the first thing you need to do is you need to put your ears down. So for the ears, we've got a couple of choices. I'm going to teach you a, a little cheat. So go onto the page, just lean the brush and pull. Okay. On this one, go onto the page, lean it down that way. So into itself and pull. Look at the two different shaped ears that you're able to get. I'm going to do that again for you. So we've got this one, straight, lean to the side, come round and pull. This one, press down, slide and pull. Now I didn't have enough um, paint on my brush, so it looks like he's been in a fight at the top. So make sure that you get that. I'm gonna do it once more because I also want to show you the bristles on this brush. So up here, lean to the side, slide and come up. Up here, press down, pull down and start to come up. And look at what's happening to my brush. I really have distorted those bristles. So before I can paint anything else now, I must come back onto my palette and just pull that paint back down so the bristles are back in good condition. And now we're ready to do the first of our circles. And the first one is going to go over the top of his ears. So we're gonna start here. So remember, I'm always sort of starting sort of further round, don't start there, otherwise you'll never get your arm round. So start round here, press down and just slide the brush round, keep going. Now think about where you're gonna stop and where you're coming off and it's there. Then this time, and you can if you want to, work with two different brush sizes if that you find that's gonna help. But this one, I'm gonna start there again I'm gonna come round, I'm making it bigger, so I'm pressing my bristles down harder. I want to make sure that his head is, is joined up. So I'm just coming round and I'm now thinking about where I'm gonna stop. So there he is, okay. His bunny tail, oh, that's so easy. So fun, fun, fun stuff to do for bunny tails. So you're gonna go into your brushes and if you haven't already made one of these, this is what we're gonna make. So you literally are going to snip into it like this. And as I'm snipping, I am 
just literally turning the bristles. Look at that. What a haircut up that is. <laughs> and I'm now, I've come further down here and I'm just snipping bits. Once you've done that, get rid of the fluff. That is a perfect bunny tail brush. And so I'm going to pick up, I need you to see this, so let's bring this over here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white from the edge of the paint. So I've only got that much on there. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of black from the edge. And I'm just going to pounce those so that I'm pushing the paint into the bristles. And you can see those bristles pushing down. I need a little bit more white, no more black, but I'm then going to pounce it and I want the black to one side. So either, either the black's going to go there or there, but so let's put it there. So the black's on that side there. Here's my bunny's tail. And this bunny's got a lovely big fluffy white tail. There he is. So look at that. Okay, so I have done one, <clears throat> but I started again. You started again. Yeah. It's, do you know this is this class is about me teaching you, so you can go back and you can watch it again and you can keep watching. So now we can use what we did in the last um, part of the or the first part of the lesson, where I've got my green and my white. So here we go. So my green and my white. So I'm just going to do. A couple of these. Let's do that and let's do a, a little daisy and that little daisy. If I now go into my yellow and my red and I pop down and I go touch and pull, touch and pull needs more red and white. So let's go a bit more touch and pull, touch and pull, touch and pull. And we've got a little bunny with just a couple of those little black dots there with our flower over the top. And how super cute is that? And again, you can finish this off along the bottom just by putting a little bit more greenery. Don't want to cover up his tail too much. It's too cute. Just there, like that. So we've created, we've got two really cute little designs and I'm going to bring back our little hedgehog so you can see him. So both of those, really quick and simple to do. And you'll get great bunnies and no two, no two will be the same, but they look fabulous when you do this. And as I'm doing more landscapes with clouds and other elements, then um, I'm going to do sunsets and things and do bunnies looking at the moon and cute stuff like that. But of course, you've got a moon here because that's what we did when we painted our circle. So there's two of the elements that we've got. I'm just going to talk to you about our mouse. So first of all, the, the bean that we've got down here is what we did with our hedgehog. Now, his face has been done slightly different to the hedgehog because when I did the hedgehog's face, I did, um, let me just get some paint on this brush so we can talk about it and I can paint one for you. So when I did that, and if I'm painting it in this direction, when I did the hedgehog's face, I literally splayed the brush brought it together and made him just a face like that. With my, with my mouse, I'm going to come round and come up and then come back and come round. So round and come up, press down and go round. And I've, I've purposely chosen a much lighter colour in the middle because I want you to be able to see where that dark is versus the light. But this is where I would change my colours to make sure that they're not too, um, they're not too far apart. So, and if I show you this one, 
on here. Oops, giving him a chin. That's quite cute, actually. Um, that gives you a, a much better colour there. Now, his ears are super easy because his ears are literally on there and you just press that bit. But again, get your arm off the table because you'll find it so much easier to just press. So I'm on there, I'm pressing and I'm turning. And they're his little ears. His eye, we start off with the dot, put a little line at the top. You can line it and give him eyeliner if you want to. And those two little white dots. And then it's a case of just building him as your teaching guide shows you. So I'm going to move on from there. And I want to just talk to you about this one because I'm going to be doing some more birds. And, and this is really an interesting um, design. So first of all, let's do some brush loading and some brush washing. So I've got my brush water and I'm just cleaning that off. And it doesn't matter that the water's really dirty. But when I come to dry this brush, it's really important that we've got that brush dry. Now, you can see I've still got some paint here. This brush wasn't, I don't think it was perfect when I got it. Get your brush cleaner into this before you put the brushes away because that will dry in there and it will start to push the bristles apart and then gradually this brush won't be as useful. So I'm just going to give it another clean because I know how much that's going to affect my painting, particularly going forward. And I'm just going to pop that down and look at how much cleaner it is. But you, that brush feels dry until I do this. I'm just going to press that. And you can see I've pushed more of that water through. And in fact, I've even managed to find myself a little bit more paint there, which you can see. So our hummingbirds, now hummingbirds come in lots of different colors and they're absolutely beautiful. And there's so much that we can do. One of the things I'd like you to learn just here is we're going to, we're gonna work with three colors. So I'm gonna work with, oops, that one's not open. Work with, we're gonna work with um, a blue, a green and white. So, there's our blue. Does anybody need more card or anything? Gold's got enough, yeah. There you go. Nice bunnies down there. Super cute. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to go through this. Now, you'll notice this shape is actually that a leaf. I mean, we've done this so many times, but... I'm going to work with my green and my white to start with. So green and white. Don't worry that I'm working with quite a small brush. I'm just applying a little bit more pressure as I'm working. And we're going to put our brush on the chisel edge. We're going to press down and we're turning this to get that green to come off first. Up on the chisel edge like that. Let me do that again, down there, turn, slide, come up, down, turn, slide, come up. Okay, so we like that. Let's go onto our page. So the green is gonna go first on here. So it's at the top. So I'm on, the, on there, I'm down slide, come up and go to the chisel edge, okay? The next one we're going to do, we're going to put, so there's my brush and I'm gonna put blue where the green was. So I'm gonna put blue on my brush. I'm, I'm going to load that over the green and white. So I've loaded it on this part of the palette. And this time, I need to do that, that stroke, but I still want the white to come off first or the top color. So like that, and my top color comes off first. Like that, and my top color is gonna come off first. So 
on here we're going to come here so like this overlapping it slightly and I'm sliding it and my top color is going to come off first oh he's got a flat beak he looks like he's crashed into a wall <laughs> so we're going to go on there and do that I might have to do a big flower on that one so there's his his beak now his body when we paint his body this piece here we're actually going to be adding in his tummy this bit of his chest so if you compare these two this bit is going to fill in here but that gap don't worry about that gap because we've got a pink element to go in it nice colors david that works that works quite well I like really that. nice green. yeah let's like show that everybody one. that Look at that, nice, really nice color, lovely. He's very, very blue, he's lovely. <laughs> and so then more green. <gasps> Is that true? Some Andrew just said to me, everybody's saying he's done a better job than me. I've got no involvement Have you all, in this. Oh, n David. Um, oh no, it. apparently it's Andrew. He's he's got me winding me up. Okay. Right, so we're we're up here, everybody. So now we're going to slide the brush down and up. Whoops, that's not very good. We're sliding it down and up like that. Okay, that's meant to that needs to come down a little bit more. So let me do it again once more. I need more paint. So completely thrown me there, Andrew. So I'm going down like that, and then up and down like that, okay? Now I'm gonna get him a, mine's gonna have a yellow tummy. So we'll have a little bit of a yellow tummy, and his tummy is just round and into there like that he looks funny when you first start doing him but don't worry he does come together because his wings we've done these lots and lots of times now his wings you you come onto the edge we're going to put the back wing in first which is another one of those then his front wing goes there like that he's starting to look more like a bird now and then his feathers which are super fun to do, uh, on the edge and flick, on and flick, on and flick, on the flick, on and flick, on and flick, on and flick, on and flick, 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 flick. So now you can see his wings. His tail, we come down here and we go quite, it's quite a long tail because he's a hummingbird and he's very elegant. Think about where you're going to go with those feathers. Make sure that they're coming up. So there's his feathers. But I need to do this little bit in here because they've all got nice little chins. So I'm going to make mine very blue. So I'll just get this so that it's really nicely blue. And a little bit of white. And all I do is take my brush and I just do myself a little tiny stroke there. So actually a little one, let's just make it a little bit straighter. Just. So what we need, it's got a, too much blue there. Right, what we need to do now is start to finish him off. And to finish him off, it's very simple because we take a very fine brush and he gets a little line on his nose because he needs a, a line. He gets a lovely, nice big eye. Oh, and mine's actually got his dot in at the same time. Our flower, um, this one's going to be blue, is going to go... And our flower, we can either go flat and pull. And let's do this one, flat and pull and flat 
and pull and flat and pull. And let's put another layer in there. So you recognize these because we did them earlier. Flat and pull, flat and pull, flat and pull. Then I'll go to my scruffy brush, my little flat fluffy one, and put that in and a little bit of the black. Let's get a tiny bit of black. Put a little bit of black in there. And we're ready then for our stem, which is going to come there and then down and up, down and up, down and up and down and up. And I've got my paint just starting to disappear a little bit there. Sometimes when you want to do shadow work, you then, I'm just going to take a little bit of paint off this brush and I've put some water on it. You start off, you put the work, the line in like I've done there, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to go over the top of it with another line, but it's going to come slightly to the side. So down, up and down. So I've got one in the background and then I'm just going to go there. Let's put that one in and one more. So we've got that just there. So you can see how, although I ran out of paint, I've made it come into part of my design. So I've got my little hummingbirds, I've got my, um, my little hedgehog, and I've also got my bunny. So we've got these projects that we've done. And I want to just talk to you about a couple of things, a couple of strokes. So just watching the stroke work that I'm seeing, there's a couple of things that we can do that I want to share with you. So first of all, these hummingbird tail feathers. So on the edge of the brush, I'm just leaning very slightly and I'm pulling the brush back in line. So let me show you that again. So I'm on the edge, I'm leaning slightly, and then as I come forward, look at how I'm now bringing it back so that it's straight. So I'm, I'm exaggerating this here, but because if it was his tail, it would be down like this. Really exaggerating it. But I want you to be able to see how what we're doing, we're getting shading from dark to light, from dark to light, from dark to light. So let's go once more with that. So on the edge of the brush, like this, lean it, slide, and then come back into the brush straight up. Brilliant, David, that's great. And remember everybody, when you come off your page, you don't get to that and flick. We come to the edge and I'm just going to, let me see which way is the best way for me to show you this. So when we're coming along here, we're coming along and we are bringing that brush off and we are following through and I'm going to do this with a giant brush it's not um a decorative painting brush but it will show you what I mean let me get this just see if I can get this paint brush to load so that I can at least share this with you because this is a big thing you know when I say come off with the green etc right so we're here okay let me Let's see where Andrew is with it. So I'm there and I'm going to press down. I'm turning the blue. So the blue's going, the white's coming as well. It's following. The blue is coming off first. Let me do that again for you. There's a lot of strokes that need this technique. So down, turn. Slide the blue. It's not turning in my fingers. It's staying still in my fingers. It's my hand and my arm that's turning. Down there, turn, slide, come off, follow through. Let me just show you this on a wide so that you can see my arm. So I'm here. 
press. Look at my arm moving. Yeah, like that. And it follows through. And I'm really exaggerating it. Let me do it the other way for you. Round, down, and follow through. Round, down, and follow through. And just, you know, practice that round, down, and follow through. I am going to produce um, a set of teaching guides with each stroke on its own on a page with multiples of them for you to practice. Because as I'm looking at everybody's work, the work is amazing. I mean, it is absolutely brilliant. You guys are learning remotely. You're doing a fantastic job. There are little tiny things. And I was talking to um, a couple of other people that are currently learning. And one of the things, you get this work and it just isn't, it's the word is you guys, people say, you make it look so easy to me. It's that easy bit, the last 20%. So what I want to do is I want to get that 20% down to the last 10% because that 20% is 80% of the look. And it's down to making sure we don't get a little blob of paint on our brush, making sure that we, we follow through when we come off. Now, I just want to paint you the poppy that is on the teaching guides that you've got. And so I'm choosing two reds. And I've, I'm choosing a really bright red and a much darker red. And let me paint... See, this brush feels a little bit chunky on the end. <laughs> it's clean. Oh, sorry, I forgot I was doing my video then. It tastes <laughs> nice. It doesn't taste of anything, <laughs> David. It's reminding me it's lunchtime, though. Um, right, so so I've got, um, I've got my colour here and two reds. So let's get those reds, actually. That red's probably a bit better. So I'm going to pull a tiny bit of the yellow onto the edge of the red. So, yeah, there we go. That's good. So side loading a little bit of red. Now, the poppy. So when we're learning our roses, we work with a V and we, and we paint like that, don't we? With this poppy, I want this to be much, much more fluid. So we're going to start there and we're just going to wiggle and we're going to wiggle for about three or four centimetres. And let me do that on white for you, because, again, that's not showing up as well as it probably could. What did I do with that white card? Here we go. Paint on the back of this one. I've got one. Thanks, David. So we're going to go into the dark red and into that yellow and we're going to dark reds at the top and I'm just literally doing a wiggle, okay? The next part of it is the important part because we're going to put the middle of the sunflower in next. So I've got my black and a tiny bit of yellow and the black is going to go in here, just there, like that. Okay, and then the next part of the sunflower is again loading our brush, but this time we're going to come round, we're going to do maybe a couple of wiggles and we're just going to slide it and come off like that. So let's just do that again for you. It's here, a little bit of a wiggle, turn, slide and follow through. And remember how we're talking about following through. So you've got that lovely bit of a poppy. That brush does need a really good clean. And then our stem. So we get to here and our stem. At the top, just the tiniest little turn. And then we come down and create the stem. And then our leaves, which are, these are the best, most fun ones to do, are like this, and we're gonna go wiggle, 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 
wiggle, wiggle, wiggle, slide off on that edge. And then on this side, you can just tidy up by sliding into there so that it looks like the leaf is turning. Or we can do an alternative where we go wiggle, 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 and just slide. And then on the other side, wiggle, 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 and slide. And again, there's our leaf. So imagine now our little poppy with our bunnies looking out. Oh, David, you got a twist on that. A little bit of a twist. Right. Let's look at this, guys, because this is what a lot of you are doing. Right. I just like David to paint us one more leaf. Can you see this? If that's happening to you, this is what you're doing. You're going wiggle, 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 wiggle. And then you don't know which one to get off the page. So you're just going like that or like that. Remember that? Remember when I got that big blue brush? So we go wiggle, 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 wiggle. Up on the edge. Come up on the edge. And then this green, this side, has got to come off the page first. Well, if it's there and it... You just push through so that the, the color at the back follows through. So we're going to go again. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Look, the green is coming off. So I'm starting to come up on the edge of the brush. The green's coming through and it's just going to follow through. Look at that. So a good exercise for you to practice is this one. Press and slide, come up on the green. Press and slide, come up on the green. Press and slide, come up on the green. Because it's making you press, come off on the green, okay? So wiggle, up, press, come off on the green. Great exercise to get those perfect. A um, Couple of things to, to ask you. I am thinking about doing a class on painting for Christmas. Painting, I know we've, we've done some Christmas painting, but painting wreaths and doing and showing you how you can actually do this on cakes. Um, I'm gonna put the class online because I think it could be a bit of fun for us to do. So I'm not gonna paint big cakes, I'm gonna paint cupcakes because they're quick and easy. So that's one of them. L I was holding then because David was painting. It was better, it but was you better, still, still didn't, yeah. you still twisted. Yeah. So that's one thing for you. The other thing Diane told me just before I came in is she's given me these <laughs> and apparently, you can have a look in that one. Ooh. This is exciting bag. There, this is this is on the um, on only there's a cadence code, but you're getting any of these bags. That's a good one. Wow, that's a good one. Oh, that's a really good one. Um, and all of these will vary as well, won't they? Yes, every bag's different, but every bag's ten pounds. You're going to get them before we take them to TV. If anybody wants them, get online, get them before anyone else gets them because they're going to go out on an email. So it's four sprays for $9.99, three paints or four paints. So just so you know, that's there. What's, uh, links in the chat, everybody. Please, can you give me some feedback? Do you want me to go slower? Do you want to see more close-ups? Would you like me to um, go faster? What, what, what? I need some feedback from you. I need to make sure that I am giving you what you guys need. So please, lots of feedback in the chat so I can have a look at it. And a just a massive, massive thank you for being on this paint journey with me. Now, because of unfortunately the sad news that we had about our queen 
Elizabeth passing, we moved our class um, and my free painted class. Um, Andrew, I've got a new date, haven't I? Just checking for you. It is next week. Um, it's Thursday at one. Unfortunately, we're not able to do it in the evening this month because there's just so many other things on. But it's on free. It's it's free. It'll be on YouTube for you to watch. I'm doing that free painting class. I'm committed to do it all of next year too. So get on these classes, practice your brush loading. Um, I'm painting loads of new stuff for you. Um, I'm doing uh, walls with um, flowers and arches, which are gonna Exciting. be great. We're gonna be t learning some faux finishes going forward, things like marbling and tortoiseshell, lapis lazio. There's loads of stuff we're gonna be doing. But this, using this decorative painting to go over any surface once you've painted your backgrounds and created the detail, this is going to be the thing that really makes everything stand up. And I'm seeing some superb work out there. And the other thing I just want to share is over the next 12 months, I need to build a team of tutors. So a team of people, because we've got a lot of people asking for face-to-face -face classes, but they can't all travel to Chesterfield. We need a team of tutors that actually we can promote as being able to give classes. So I, I, over the next month or so, we'll give you more details about that. It's gonna be then coming on a program with me so I can teach you to teach, but start thinking about it because if you were somebody who thought you could never paint and you're now thinking, actually, do you know what? I'm better than I was a month ago. You're the perfect teacher because the teachers who teach the best are the ones that thought they couldn't do it because they're converts. So what a great way of me getting you guys to the next stage too. So massive, massive thank you. David, that is looking pretty smart. I'm really happy with it, yeah. So, I find it so fascinating how quick you can grasp it just once you've learned the stroke. And you told me um, I'll never learn to paint I a did. couple of months ago. Yeah. How much time do you spend practicing? Not enough, if I'm quite honest, at the moment to be able to like, continue to do it. But I find it fascinating how much through just even an hour session, how much it can change and how much you can learn um, and how much there is to actually be able to do with it. For me, I've used these paints on flat surfaces and maybe I've done some shabby chic effects. I've never done decorative painting. So it's it's really opened my eyes to different ways of using a paint. And it's it gives you a massive sense of achievement as well, which I think is really nice because you feel proud of your work. Yeah, you do. And it's that place that you go while you're painting. And I know it's frustrating sometimes, but you know when you do that perfect stroke, it feels good, it's doesn't incredible. it? It's incredible. It's amazing. Okay, so everybody, I'm going to see you again. Um, we'll be painting again very, very soon. Please join me for our free class. There's loads of stuff for you to watch on YouTube. And um, just thank you. Don't forget to use your code. That's in the in the chat. And get those goodie bags before David buys them all. Well, actually, I might have to arm wrestle him. <laughs> I'll be chasing you. <laughs> I was thinking we could get out the door fast enough. Okay, we'll speak to you all soon. Lots of love. Um, are there any any questions, Andrew, in the chat? Let's just double double check before we disappear. Oh, apparently you're all saying he does amazing close-ups. His camera works phenomenal. Um, Andrew is the best producer that you've ever seen. Um, <laughs> he, I think you should switch roles next time. <laughs> I think this has just become an Andrew fan club. Um, or he's um, he's sat there filling the chat in himself. Not quite sure. Andrew's <laughs> mum, if you're watching and you're doing the chat, um, great job. You've really, um, really put him on a pedestal today. We'll try and keep him up there for you. Take care, everyone. It's lovely to see you. Thank you Thank to you. Um, to Len and Hadriana and Nikki and Mary and Chris and um, and Carol and some of you. I can't even read your names, but thank you to everybody for watching. It's been a real pleasure. Take care, everyone.